All right, everybody, I'm gonna show you a neat little <clears throat> trick to increasing your fuel mileage. Um, it's pretty simple. For this particular example, I'm just gonna take this two gallon gas can I had around <clears throat> and about, yeah, I got eight or nine feet of this hose here. You wanna use the big hose, <clears throat> bigger, small, bigger than this is even work too, but for this example, we're just going to run with this stuff here. I think it's a uh, five eighths. <clears throat> yeah, five eighths ID <coughs> hose. Excuse me, <clears throat> my throat won't stop. Um, and I'll show you what we're going to do here. I'm going to use my Honda CRV here for the example. As of right now, you know, it's just running like a normal CRV. It's getting probably about. Oh, they don't do the best. I want to say probably highways, probably only 25 miles per gallon, probably 18, 19 around town. So I'm gonna show you what to do here. I got this gas jug and uh, it's got one gallon of gas in it exactly. So next what I'm gonna do is modify it for this. I'll pick up the video once I have some of that done. First thing we're gonna do is drill three holes in it and I'm using this stepper bit. And you want to make the holes fit perfectly airtight. No slack. If you get too big, you have to seal it around the edge. You want to run the hose down into the very bottom, so just, just barely off the bottom of the, of the gas tank. Um, and then we're going to cut the hose off. And we're going to do that for three of them. Okay? So all three hoses will be ran down in, just barely off the bottom of the gas tank, tank definitely way down inside the gas, all right, for these first three hoses pick up the video once I have all three holes done and three hoses ran into the bottom. Okay, guys, all three hoses are done and they all three run to the very bottom. Now, we're going to do the same thing on the other side. After I seal this back up, I want to make sure you can seal the lid real good. I just used that so I could look down in there and See the bottom okay it's sealed um, do the same thing over here with three hoses uh, but these hoses you want to put just barely in you want to put them maybe down in there like yay far way above the gas level okay and uh, this is where we got to do some measuring because what we're going to do is with those three hoses is we're going to tie them in to the intake so I'm going to get my tools out here and take a gander around this intake and see what's what with it. See where I want to tie in. And I'll pick up the video once I figure that part out. Because that will determine on how long I uh, make those hoses. And I'm probably going to have to remove this whole air box to set the gas can right here anyway. So I'll pick that up here as soon as I figure that part out. Okay, so the gas can fits in there pretty nice. I'll end up fast strapping it down. Uh, right now it can't really go anywhere. Actually... Radiator hose sits right nice against it, so that'll keep it warm. Because the warmer the gas, the better this process will work. Um, I found this piece of three-inch intercooler piping, and I cut a piece of round plastic out, stuck over the end, and then sealed it all up with high temp uh, metal tape. And this will end up getting slid back into here and uh, clamped so that it's airtight and sealed. And then I will drill three holes in this and run three hoses from here into this and I'll pick up from there when we're done. Okay, so here we have the hoses in the top of the can into three holes I drilled in that aluminum piece and this is sealed into this. I might end up putting a clamp here and I will end up putting some sealant around all the fittings just to make sure even though I drilled the holes small enough that the hose seals pretty good. So now the next step will be to uh, put my tools away here and test it out um, finished project here kind of ended up pulling these back up out of the fuel here's the deal with this 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 would probably work way better on a carbureted setup than something fuel injection um, I don't know the, the, the get the air fuel ratios right and you have the sensors and the everything it's just it's 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 being a pain in the ass for me to dial in the air fuel ratio right you know, like the how rich or lean it is. So basically right now, I found that having two hoses drawing vapor, this one kind of not for now, 
and these three pulled up out of the gas kind of just like sucking air in across the top of the gas surface and this sealed so far is giving me the best drivability um, what I've done here is pinch the fuel line all the way shut this is cranked that's cranked as hard as it can go so there's no fuel getting into the fuel rail and uh, it's being a bear you know it's one of those things where you tinker here and there probably have to adjust the number of hoses and get it all right but I'll tell you what it fires up it runs and drives and it's running just off the vapor in the top of that tank that should uh, give me phenomenal gas mileage if I can get it down right see she fires right up idles a little low until it picks up there don't pay no attention to that check engine light that's been on since I bought the car um, it runs and drives fired right up so let me shut the hood And again, we're running right now just off of this, just off the vapor, off the top of the jug. Uh, that's pinched shut. So, I have the gas can about half full. I, if I hit a bumper, turn too hard, it sloshes gas up into those hoses and shuts the car off. So that's another thing that has to be adjusted, probably with some baffling or whatever, but I'll just show you here how we can drive it around. And there we go. We're driving on just the vapor off the top of that can. Um, so what I'll do is I'll go down the road here and drive her around a little bit and goof off, you know, see how she goes. I'd like to try to keep track of the mileage, but um, I don't have the air fuel dialed in just right. I don't know if I could... I can easily just go out on the highway and drive, because all I have to do to run back off the regular fuel system is um, pull those hoses out completely and undo that clamp on the fuel line there, and it would let me drive normal. So that's it. It's just a fun little experiment for you to try if you have a beater car around or something. You know, like I said, probably the older the car, the better as far as gas my, or carburetion goes. It's probably easier. Carburetors don't rely on so many sensors and everything, but yeah, we're, we're driving. Nothing but the vapor off the top of that can. And uh, once I figure out how to get the air fuel dialed and just ride, I bet you she'll run pretty good. That's it. Enjoy. All right, well, a um, little update, been out here driving around. Drivability is a little different than what we're, you know, used to. It, uh, sometimes you got to pump the gas pedal just a little bit to get it up and get her moving. You know, it's the air fuel richness issue. Um, but there's where my gas gauge is. You see it's uh, just pretty much directly right between half and empty. And uh, I'm going to go, you know, 30, 40 mile cruise here. Uh, and we'll see how she does. I have exactly a gallon of gas out in that jug out there. And uh, I reset the trip odometer just now. I've actually been driving around a little bit, but you see it's just about up to one mile. I just reset it now because I didn't think about it. So yeah, I'm out driving around and working good. I'll update you here after I get some miles on her. Another small update for you guys. Uh, made a minor adjustment on the air fuel ratio out there. I uh, added another hole and a hose on the front side of the can and drilled another just air breather on the uh, aluminum piece just another air breather hole and then was able to hook up that third hose there and uh, so far this seems to be about the best combination I'm cruising down the highway right now at 60 mile an hour you see my gas gauge still hasn't moved um, I'm gonna try to find the fuel pump relay and actually yank that and see if I'm getting any maybe leaking fuel past that clamp or anything to make sure the fuel pump ain't helping at all uh, I tried pulling the fuel pump fuse, but in this car, the fuel pump fuse also is uh, tied into something else electronically. So if when I pull that, it won't fire no matter what. So I've got to try to find the relay or just unhook the fuel pump. But yeah, I'm going to go for a long drive, 60 mile an hour. Uh, seems like it has a lot to do with how much vapor that thing can generate. Um, this doesn't want to run, run too much past 4,000, 5,000 RPM, which is plenty high. Like when I'm accelerating down uh, in first gear, pulling out on the highway or something, if I rev her up real quick, it usually falls on her face around four or 5,000. It just doesn't generate enough uh, vapor. But um, even going down a highway right here right now at this steady 55, 60 mile an hour, I can feel a little surging. It's just a little bit. It's, it's nothing hateful. But uh, other than that, running pretty good here. We'll see, uh, see how far she goes on that one gallon of fuel in that tank. We'll go from there. I'll let you know. Conclusion part of the video. So this was actually um, a pretty 
successful proof of concept. Uh, final thoughts. Definitely, definitely don't recommend driving around with a cat gas can underneath your hood for safety reasons. This was just more along the lines just to prove whether or not it could work. And it did. Uh, the trickiest part was getting the right number of hoses for the air fuel ratio. Ended up uh, putting a discipline right, downright breather hole there and there so that it could lean it out a little bit, still get, get the fumes. Drove around um, a lot yesterday on just the fumes. Uh, I think the mileage ended up being 30, 30 some miles before I uh, unhooked it and turned the fuel lot back on and drove back home. It was, even with the, the fine tuning I did, I spent probably about a half hour adjusting it. It was still too rich on a long, what I noticed was on a long highway drive, um, things cool down, or liquids like gasoline, well, as they evaporate, they get cool. They get cold to the touch, just like whenever you put gas on your hand or alcohol on your hand and it evaporates, it becomes cold. Uh, as the fumes are being drawn off faster and faster from the engine, that gets cold, and it started to get uh, condensation and whatnot from it. And the motor started to run not as well. Started to want to buck around even worse. So it would take some adjustments to the hoses to maybe a different device. Maybe some kind of a ball valve or something. You'd have to really be desperate and into it to want to do this. But um, I just wanted to post the finished video up here and tell you guys, you know, it works. You can drive off fumes. It's not a fake thing. Uh, is it worth doing in this type of setup? No. Gas mileage it was better than running on regular gas, but um, not worth the safety factor and issue. So just wanted to show you guys this is kind of a cool little experiment to, to see how it does work. Later.